My name is Valinda Roche. I was formerly Valinda Hillary, and uh, I'm from Littleton, Colorado. And I went to school at University of Wyoming. <whistles> yeah! <laughs> cowgirls. Who are the cowgirls? <laughs> anyway, that's what we do. We whoop you. Anyway, uh, I played at University of Wyoming. I walked on there, and I was a soccer player. And then all of a sudden, I was like six foot tall, and I'm like, what am I doing playing soccer? Hmm, I should play volleyball. So I uh, played at University of Wyoming, got done there, and wanted to play for the national team, and I tried out, and I was pretty much not really a middle blocker for the national team at 5'11". So uh, I came out to California. When I was on the AVP tour, it was a battle, a spiritual battle. I mean, it was like... Do you go to the bar tonight with the girls, or do you go hang out with the Christians, or do you go to your room? I mean, or do you go with this group of guys that we just met? And I mean, there's just always so much temptation. You've been in a bikini all day. You've been in the hot sun. And uh, there's usually we had a beer sponsor. There was Miller Light or Bud Light. There's plenty of beer all over the place. And so every single tournament, there was that choice. You had to make that choice. You know, are you going to do what the world does, or are you going to do what God wants you to do. And you know, I'm not going to say it was 100% like holy godly woman, but um, I would really cling to a lot of my, uh, the girls and on the tour and a couple guys that were Christians, we'd kind of like look at each other, kind of give each other the eye like, are you going to stick in there? You know, are we going to do this? And uh, we'd say to each other, we had like this little cue, we'd say to each other, Janice Opalinski, she's an old great player. Um, back in the 80s, she was one of the greatest players. Janice Hare is her name now. We'd look at each other and we'd go, you know you want to, you know you do. And that meant, you know you want to follow Christ. You know you want to hang in there with Him. And so, um, it's tough. I think on any professional tour, you, you gets to your head like, oh, I just won this and I'm that. And, and I, sh I deserve to go party. Or you always have the idea, oh, I deserve to go party because I lost. There was, you know, sometimes where there'd be your partner would show up and she, they didn't want to room with you because she had her boyfriend there. It was like, oh, okay, I'll room over here, but you're going to room with him. And so that was always, you know, going to a hotel and who's staying in the room, who's going to end up there. I mean, that was a big deal. Um, there was times where, uh, you know, there was it was just cutthroat sometimes with uh, with each other. Like, if there's a sponsor out there, you know, telling them the truth. You know, it was pretty difficult staying. I mean, we encouraged each other. There was only like five or six of us that were Christians, but there was one of them going through a divorce and you know the same issue. Like, you're out of town and you're away from your husband. I mean, the, all that kind of stuff went on because there were a bunch of adult women on this tour and. Um, we definitely encouraged each other. I mean, there was some times where you just kind of had to not say anything and just leave it up to God. Fellowship and community is key. Um, it's just like being on a team and you go work out alone in the gym. How great of a workout do you get compared to if you have a couple teammates with you? I mean, it's just, if you have some encouragement, you, you look over and they're working hard or you know you call each other well I'm gonna run today are you are you doing your workout I mean it's just keeps you going and spurring you on so I think it's key just like in athletics where you get teammates you've got to have that in Christ I think once you grasp that you are a daughter of the Most High God the God that made the ocean the God that made the sand the God that has created it all and that he is your portion you you finally get that get that glimpse that you know what I am his daughter I am he loves me it's like you know what who cares about the other stuff I mean it's great to have all that stuff but underneath you just always got to know that you know I'm a child of God and there's no higher calling in this life I've already hit it like you know, I'm a child of God, and I know where I'm going, and I know He has a plan for me, and I don't have to struggle and fight and try to, like, I'm a baller, you know, puff myself up because I already have that. And then in our weakness, He will make us strong. I mean, you just have to trust in Him. He'll just start making a way for you, and 
and he's there the whole time. No matter what you want to be, you want to be a great volleyball player, great. But you know what? You could be the greatest volleyball player in the world and go to hell. But we're, we can be great volleyball players and have something inside of us to give, and that's relationship with Christ and eternal life. So we really have the key. We have the key of what most people are looking for, and they're looking for peace, and they're looking for a connection with God. So I don't know. It's kind of neat. It's kind of special that we, as Christians, we, uh, as daughters uh, and sons of God, we really have what people need and want. So you can build your identity in that. You know, it's like you kind of got this thing going on with God and then everything else just will happen. I think uh, if you just stay, no matter what you're going through, if you just stay close to him, he just, he just stays close to you. Even if you go through times where you're not worshiping all the time, you're not going to church, you're in rebellion or whatever, he's just, just in my life with the ups and downs, he's just, you know, he always, you always come back to him.